Good morning, everyone. Today is a really special day on the calendar. Kids, I really hope that you've spoiled your dads. And the, the dads that are watching, I hope that you have really special days and feel loved. So today my message is a quick one just to do with Father's Day. And the greatest father of all is obviously God the Father. And um, so often children we see God as powerful and as the king and someone who is this mighty and he, that, that he is all of those things. But he is also gentle and meek and mild and loves children. It tells us in the Bible that he has a special spot in his heart for children. And he is the first father and the greatest version and role model that we could ever imagine of a father. And that's what I want to focus on today without taking the attention off your amazing fathers. Because I do believe that God sends fathers in, gives us fathers and father role models and figures in our life. Um, and I really pray that those men that are father figures in your life reciprocate the role model that God is for, and what, what he should be in, as a father figure to us. So last year I read this story and I was really tempted to read it again because I just think it's an amazing book and always draws my attention back to God the Father and the fact that he is so many roles, but he is also the, the father figure. Um, and, but instead of rereading it again, I'm going to refer to it and just remind us. So even, though, even if you haven't heard it, um, I'm going to skim through it and just explain where it lands up. This book was written by Chris Tomlin, who is a worship leader, a renowned one that has been around for years and written really famous songs that I'm sure well, that we do sing in church. And he wrote it again after singing or, and writing the song Good, Good Father. So that is actually a worship song. And then he decided to write the book, similar to my story last week. And it revolves around a little bear and he named Tucker, and Tucker lives in a little village or whatever where everyone seems to be upset. The bears are all sad, and they are hungry, and they're angry, and so he goes on a mission to speak to the king of the land. And on his journey, he comes across different animals because he wants to take the king a special gift, and so as he meets different animals along the way, he says to them, what can I bring the king? And the first lot of raccoons say, the king is a good warrior. So um, think about taking him a shield because the king can keep you safe. And then he comes across an owl and the owl says, the king is a good teacher. So what about taking him a book? And then he comes across foxes. And the foxes say the king is a good doctor, as in a good healer. So why don't you think about something to take like they've got some things in their hand, plasters or something medical. He's really, really perplexed because so many people are telling them, him different versions of what the king is like. And then he comes across a squirrel and the squirrel says the king is a good farmer. He will help you grow food. So what about taking some seeds? The turtles tell him that the, the king is a good musician. So why don't you take him an instrument? Because he will bring you joy. And eventually he arrives at the castle and he's still perplexed and confused because he doesn't actually know which gift is going to be the best one. And the door is always wide open, so he walks on right inside to be greeted by the king, the lion. And the first thing the king says to him is, Tucker, you brought the perfect gift. And Tucker's standing there thinking, well, which one is it? On their journey back to the little bear's town, Tucker asks the king questions like, are you a warrior? Are you a teacher? Are you a musician? Are you a doctor? Are you a farmer too? To which the king replies yes to every one of those questions. And eventually he smiles and says, I am all of these things because I am a good father. 
And soon the king and the little bear reached Tucker's town. When the bears saw the king, one by one, they bowed down. The king walked through the town and gave help to everyone who needed it. Maybe he gave food to the ones that were hungry, and he helped the ones that were sick, and he brought joy by playing music to the ones that were sad. Tucker said to the king, Now I see, you are not only a good father, you are a good, good father. A good, good father protects us. A good, good father teaches us. A good, good father makes us well. A good, good father gives us all that we need. A good, good father fills life with music and laughter. And most of all, a good, good father loves us. And then right at the end, he says, Dear King, I have one last question. What was the, the perfect gift? You are the perfect gift, said the king to Tucker. You came to me when you needed help. You trusted me. You bring me great joy, and I love you with all of my heart, the same way I love all of my children. And I want to tell you today, there are some children that are listening to this that maybe think, well, my father doesn't tick all of those boxes, and I wish maybe things were different, or maybe I, I wish my father did this, or my father or mother, okay, but today is Father's Day. I want to tell you that God our Father is all of those things. He is our healer. He's our protector. He, is, um, he fills our life with, with joy, the joy of the Lord. Um, he gives us all that we need. He tells us in the Bible, do not worry about a thing, for if I give the birds of the air food to eat, how much more will I give you and provide for you? And most of all, he loves us, just like he does every single one of his children. Um, I pray that the father figures in your lives, whether you have a father or not, but that the father figures in your lives reflect some of these traits that God wants us to experience. Um, but I want to encourage you, children, to see God as the most incredible father. That's what he is. He's our father. And on Father's Day today, I really hope that you spoil your dads and that you have a really happy day. And at the bottom of all of that, I pray that you will come to know God the Father in the way that he desires to be so close to you. So as we come to the end of this term and we break up for about three weeks, um, I really hope that you have a good break. It's been a long and busy term, I know, for children and parents alike. And I really look forward to being back next term as we share the new theme that we're going to be doing um, as a children's church. Let's end in prayer. Father God, thank you that you are not just a good father. You are the, a good, good father, the best father, the best example of a role model of a father. And I just pray today that um, fathers around the world will feel that your blessing over them for the amazing and important job that they have in each of our lives. And the, the role of so many things, um, like we've read about in the book, parents have so many different parts that make up the one role of a father or a mother. And I just pray for your blessing over them. And I pray that, that fathers would, would draw near to you in order to know how to be the best version that they can be to their children. I pray that you would be with uh, the children during the school holidays, that you would give them rest and that they would be fun and joyful. Um, it would be a fun and joyful break. We pray this in and through your name. Amen.